Welcome back. Uh, one of the uh, one of the innovations we've tried to bring is a tax classroom in this uh, in our budget coverage because as, I, as we've been emphasizing for a number of you, the taxes and and what are the possibilities of tax reform are critical in a sense to the aam aadmi. The average person wants to know how will this budget affect his or her wallet, and and that's what we are trying to do, trying and breaking this down to try and make this as simple as possible because. Uh, as we've been saying, there's a lot of elbow room in a way that the finance minister has this time in comparison to previous uh, uh, budgets and previous finance ministers, particularly in the last five years. Given the state of the fiscal deficit, given the fact that uh, the government itself is now claiming that, uh, that, that, that they are not worried about the deficit, they believe that the deficit is fully under control, oil prices are down, there's a sense that the finance minister perhaps has a chance, a little bit more elbow room uh, to be a little bit more imaginative perhaps with tax revenues in this budget in comparison to previous budgets. Those images as you are seeing were earlier in the day when uh, the finance minister uh, was, uh, was coming to North Block. He's since of course gone to Parliament. And I just want to go for a moment to Preeti Chaudhary. Preeti, very simply we want to know in terms of what are the options that the finance minister has in this budget from a pure direct taxation point of view? Well, you know, the, we're going to put that question to Divya Baveja from Deloitte Haskins and Sells LLP. Uh, basically simplifying things for our viewers. If, you know, jargon like um, ATC, ATCC, ATD all flies over your head and very basic things and how I can maximum save my tax, uh, you know, is uh, on people's mind. What is it? How do we simplify things? Especially, what is it that the finance minister can do to make our lives easier where savings are concerned? So we're going to put out some graphics there as well, uh, uh, Mr. Baveja. But, you know, take us through. How is it that uh, we as individuals out there, people who don't quite know, uh, you know, uh, much other than, you know, knowing that they have to speak to their uh, tax person, which is their chartered accountant at that point of the time. Uh, how do we save taxes? And more so, how can the finance minister ease the tax burden on the salaried class? Just take us through that. Right. So when we look at the deductions which are there right. say under section 80C, yes. there are various avenues of investment which are there where one can invest. So that limit of 1,50,000 right. is reduced from my tax my income to arrive at the taxable income. Right. And when I see what are the avenues which are there in ATC. Can you just take us through what is ATC? What exactly okay. is ATC? Because I don't quite know what ATC is. So ATC is a deduction available to an individual where he makes certain specified investments. Right. The investments could be in say life insurance premium. It could be in terms of investment in provident fund, public provident fund, or it could be in specified mutual funds right. which are there. Or it could be also in terms of tuition fees or payment repayment of a housing loan principal. Right. Now the limit is. So yeah, set so this is what we're talking about. This is you know investments under ATC. ATC. So that's what you're right. talking about. So yes. employment fund, public provident fund. Right. So all of you know when 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 the chartered accountant tells me or tells our viewers out there who are not really you know familiar with the jargon. So this is what we can invest under. Absolutely. And you we're can giving invest out, in yes. any of those schemes. Right. These schemes. And right there. Yes. yes. And the limit is one lakh fifty thousand. Yes. Now it is expected that this limit may go up. Okay. Considering so that is what the finance minister can do. So can we have do, that yes. extra disposable, extra, money in extra, your hand. extra yes. money in our hand. So uh, what can he do? Come again. So what he can do care is the the amount which is limit under ATC. He right. can increase it from one lakh fifty thousand to two lakh rupees. Okay. So that will mean an additional deduction of fifty thousand rupees in hands of the taxpayers, right. individual taxpayers, which would mean a saving okay. of the 30 percent or 30.9 percent okay. of the tax of the amount which all right so, so that is where the disposable That's income disposable comes, income comes uh, not yes. so much about saving but the disposable income especially yes. for somebody like me well right. thank you mr Baveja. we'll keep coming back to you it's over to rajdeep in the studio thanks very much okay countdown has begun just about 15 minutes to go before the finance minister gets up in <coughs> parliament to deliver the budget one of the words that we've been using since yesterday in our pre-budget show and we didn't use it really it was uh, Arvind Subramaniam, Chief Economic Advisor, who used uh, the word Big Bang. This is an appropriate moment for a Big Bang reform. And uh, Meera Sanya, I'll use the word. So you start. What is that Big Bang reform that you'd like to look? You know, it's become a word, perhaps since uh, Chidambaram's dream budget, that every budget has this expectation that unless you create, you know, you have some defining element, uh, it won't be seen as a Big Bang budget. So what is that Big Bang that you'd like to see today? Look, in terms of emphasis, Rajdeep, I'd like to see real emphasis on education 
I'd like to see what incentives and disincentives the government is putting in place to outline its vision. For mm -hmm. example, are they going to push renewable energy? Are they going to push uh, things like water harvesting? What are they planning to do? I'd also like to see, as I said, simplification, dramatic simplification of the tax structure. I think that is very, very critical. And thirdly, I'd like to see something innovative. For example, we have very large gold reserves. The example of Turkey has shown that if you, you know, commercial banks can hold their reserves in gold, you can accept gold deposits. These are the kind of things we need to do to monetize assets which are under the pillow. You know, we're talking of a low savings, well, not, not low savings rate, but we need to push it up to fund infrastructure. Let's talk about all of this. I think in uh, the rail ministry, for example, Suresh Prabhu pointed out, bringing in insurance and pension funds. Now, this has been a long-standing demand. Why can't insurance and <coughs> pension funds start investing in infrastructure? You know, this is a, a country where we have a big demographic dividend. How are these young people going to secure their old age? Mm -hmm. These are things we need to start thinking about now, and I think this is the right time. These are completely non-controversial. Let's be honest. Why? On pension funds, there's been huge political opposition. Well, is it is you know is it is it is it well grounded opposition? No, I this think is, that is, this really is Meera Sanyal, presumably the, the banker speaking, not Meera Sanyal, the politician. I don't know whether the Aam no, Aadmi Party, for example, would today accept the opening up of pension funds. Uh, well, let me say this is an Aam Aurat. Look. I'm going to retire or, you know, I am retired, but in 20 years, how am I going to look at what, what will I get in terms of a fixed income stream? You can have a project which is a, a rail project, you can have a roadways project. They will give you steady project finance income streams which are secured. These are the kind of things that we require long-term investment in. There's a perfect match. It's, I think as Gulcharan says, it's a question of explaining it. And by the way, the arm insan, the arm aurat and the arm admi of this country is highly sensible and exactly. understand understands these things very, very well. Well, I hope that the, I, I, I'm, I'm sure the Aam Aadmi is sensible. I hope the Aam Aadmi party also will be equally sensible when it of comes course. to this. But <laughs> I'm going to take one on each side. So you go to Dr. Baru, your, your recipe for the big bang reform. You've given some yesterday to me, including uh, in some way reducing downsizing government, which you believe is an important element. Your big bang reform that you'd like to see. If 91 was about trade liberalization, 97 was tax liberal, uh, tax reform. What would you like to see 2015 become? Make in India. Ease of business. Really, that's the big bang one expects. That it's not about just you know taxation policies. It's about a range of initiatives that can be taken to make it easier for people to invest in this country, to create employment in this country, to you know uh, uh, build in better infrastructure. India needs more investment. Our investment GDP ratio has gone down in the last five years. Mm -hmm. You have to reverse that. So any policy statements that can actually overnight make India a more attractive place for investors to invest in, for Indian investors to return to India. We have seen an outward capital flow in the last five years. Right. We need to see a reverse of that, you know, Indian businessmen investing in India. Okay. Ajay, I think the UPA government did a lot of big bang announcements over 10 years and it doesn't seem to have got us where we wanted to be. And I, not undermining progress that we've made in the last few decades, but we, ha we could have been somewhere else if there was better governance. What's and your I, big bang reform? So that you my, my big bang reform is no big bang announcements. I'm saying don't raise expectations indefinitely. Let's reset them. And I'll give you a very small example. Rather than talking about big things, if you just do deworming, just deworming of all cattle in the country, the milk production of the country goes up by 20%. You know, those are the kind of small, small things you need. You don't need big bang reforms to get political mileage. The mileage doesn't last more than six months, seven months. You said from seen. an agricultural point of view, yes. a deworming of the cattle of this country would raise milk production by 20 percent. By 20 percent. That's right. The budget can't do that, surely. No, but they can allocate money. <laughs> no, That's exactly you, what you I'm want saying. Want That's what deworming of government. <laughs> Achy, that, you want <laughs> okay, you're saying, you're saying the budget. Allocations <laughs> have to be right. They cannot be for <laughs> huge announcements like yeah. whatever. Because, you know, uh, one of the problems that, with the that's last... That's a lovely headline. As a former editor, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> yes. Deworm the bureaucracy. Deworm the government. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but, you know, the, the fact I'll was... The fact <laughs> was... Growth rate will go up. The fact was, Gucharan Das, if you remember, in the one of the problems with Mr. Jaitley's budget in July was that he announced all these small hundred crore investments in various yeah. schemes. They added up to very little in the end. Do you believe he's got to get away from that yeah. and just do two or three focus areas, much in the manner that Suresh Prabhu attempted yes. in the railway budget? Yes, I think Suresh Prabhu's railway budget speech is a model for all politicians when they speak. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would ask 
uh, him to do. Mm -hmm. One is what just Sanjay just talked about, mm -hmm. is that provide not just make in India, mm -hmm. but a very detailed roadmap. You know, all the things that make us 142 mm -hmm. on the index of ease of doing business, how will we actually go to 50? Mm -hmm. In other words, th there's a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And they'll be, he'll be announcing a lot of things in infrastructure, etc. But it'd be very good for the viewer to really see a roadmap of the kind that Suresh Prabhu laid out, how to make railways an engine of India's future growth. So it could include a roadmap for subsidies, it could in involve a roadmap for you know, the way Correct. you are looking at India over the next five years and Correct. in a sense depoliticize the budget, which is what yeah, Suresh right. Prabhu attempted with the railway budget. Yeah, Money for you, the big bang that you'd like to see. I want to see two big bangs, which mm -hmm. I am confident I will not see. Mm -hmm. One is a huge increase in public investment in agriculture mm -hmm. and in the poorest farmers, mm -hmm. that is those with less than two and a half hectares of land. Mm -hmm. The second big bang uh, change I want to see mm -hmm. is a focus not on the ease of business doing business index at which we are in 142, but our IHD, the uh, index of human development, where we are at 135 and have been there for the last 20 years, despite all this neoliberalism. I'd like to see that go up to 50, and for that, it is essential that the management of the Indian polity and its administration be decentralized to the panchayats and the nagarpalikas. If that is done, then we are going to see a huge improvement in our human development indices. I don't expect this government, which has no interest of the farmers and the okay, poor money. Okay, money. Okay, money. That's the political point that you're do. making today. Well, you're very important. That's why I have no expectation from this budget. Okay, go ahead. You know, I think the the Big Bang has already started. Mm -hmm. It started with Reddy's mm -hmm. Finance Commission report. Mm -hmm. It continued with what Prabhu presented as far as the rail budget is concerned. Mm -hmm. So I think the path has been set, one from outside of the government, outside of the, uh, not the government, but outside of the political party, BJP, one from within the BJP. Basically, and I want to echo the same thing, but we need to echo it uh, a lot, what I am looking for is a change, uh, the beginning of a change in the mindset of Indian bureaucrats, Indian politicians, Indian uh, industrialists, etc. That's number one. An Indian industrialist comes in, there's no more time for crony capitalism. You've got to compete. All of us have got to compete. So make in India by Indians, not by the Babus of India. Okay. Remember, in a more, you, you wanted to make a point. Yes, I can never say no. It's not a big bang, it's a small bang, but it relates to the banking sector. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing very, very large gross NPAs there, and we need to recapitalize our banking system, but particularly our PSU banks. I hope the finance minister lays out Absolutely. a roadmap for that. I think that's very important. So, 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 so why, why not simultaneously get the banks to not lend to all these fat cats? I completely who agree with you. Huge yes, amounts yes, of money yes. from them. We all agree, we all agree yeah. on that. Yeah. We are all yeah. agreeable yeah. on that. Agree money is not. As if you, one, it, one point. Yes. They didn't do quick, it. Quick, quick point. So, so on the banking. You didn't do it. Yeah, exactly. The, the Congress, there are a lot of things that the Congress didn't do. So, yeah, yeah, money conveniently why, gives no, things no, no. away from his why, party. Why do you think I was, wasn't no. in the cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because what I one wanted. One of the many so reasons I, why you yeah, wanted. Because we went into the Manmohan syndrome instead of the Nehru syndrome. So, okay, yes. On, on, instead of the, on the banking, syndrome. On, yes. on yeah. the banking sector, I think so. The finance minister has to be more transparent. In every budget, they talk about 8 lakh crore rupees, 7 lakh crore rupees to the farming community but it's absolutely documented that around 50 percent of it is given to people who live in cities so I think so in this budget transparency needs to come in you I need agree. to whatever figures you say need to be understood for what they are by the public not do a jugglery over okay. and that applies to everything not just banking. okay so we've got a